speaking to someone whose sole mission is to make the person they love feel better. If they're going to go to a site to learn every single thing they can and educate themselves because it's, it's their mission. Like I said, their, their job is to be the person that knows everything and the person that can guide the conversations with doctors um, and make sure that if the doctor's not asking the right question, you know, they'll make the doctor ask the question. Um, and basically, they're, they're just thinking that their job is to be an advocate for the person they care about, whether it's a kid or, or a parent. And I would actually say that one of the issues that we're very aware of, and I would say it's an asset that most people to some degree ignore, it's, it's just the asset of time. We not only want to provide a pathway for you that's very obvious based on what you're going through, but at the same time you want to do it in literally a matter of seconds. I arrive at the site, there's a very obvious doorway, I walk through it, there's essentially overview text there that gives me a sense of okay I am in the right place and then there's a very obvious call to action. There's more information down the page but what we've ascertained from interviews with patients and interviews with our client is that these are priority pieces of content and that's part of our UX, that's part of the deep dig that we do before we even get to website design. Design at that point uh, is simply bringing to life the brand, but the underpinning to that is without question understanding the patient, understanding the person that's coming in, and providing them with relevant content. Clients in the healthcare space that do do campaigns that pertain to uh, treatment of uh, diseases for children or surgeries that children might need to undergo, I'm marketing to the caregiver or parent in all cases. Um, and that would include, you know, choosing targeting that is specific to that particular parent that I might be um, reaching out to. So, for example, uh, we work with a, a hospital that's running campaigns um, for uh, targeting, you know, uh, uh, people that might be eligible, children that might be eligible for particular surgeries. Um, we know that the decision maker in those cases um, is always uh, or typically is a woman with an age range of 25 to 35, typically located in a specific geolocation with interests that have to do with parenting and family um, and health and stuff like that. Um, and we target our campaigns to that parent or caregiver because we know they will be the ones making the decision for their child in all cases. Generational is important, we bear that in mind. So if, as an example to that would be, you know, I'm browsing the site and I'm 70 years old, or I'm browsing the site and I'm 20 years old. Um, there is a lot of, the, the generational part of that, quite frankly, is more to do with, let's say, ADA compliance. Um, I'm a 70 year old coming into the site. We need to be aware of simple things like type size, um, as a 70 year old, you're not really going to be consuming information in 12 point type. We need to actually default to 18 point type. We need to be providing you with high contrast imagery, high contrast colors. So compliance is an issue simply because of my age. We have to filter out a lot of your brand assets based on ADA compliance. Those, literally those 15 colors there are three of them that are compliant. You can't use the others, and we've actually run into that, and that's a somewhat of a shock sometimes to a client, which is, no, no, you don't understand. These are our colors, and I'm saying I understand perfectly well, but there are only three of them that actually adhere to the somewhat severe restrictions of compliance. Find that out early in the project, and your expectations, um, albeit will be somewhat narrower, I think, especially from a design perspective, but um, it will certainly save you time in the long run. In some cases, if you're designing a website that works very well for an elderly audience, you're actually designing a website that should work well for everybody because it's not so much that there's a different set of rules, right? Like, the broad general rules for everybody is we want simple, we want easy to find the thing I'm looking for, clear labels, clear everything. The real difference is that those issues, those things are so much more critical with an, elderly, with an elderly audience because they won't get past those speed bumps. They won't get past that friction. They're just, they're going to give up and go somewhere else. So we're coming up with things like doctor discussion guides where 
whether it's a kind of a very generic just list of questions you should bring to your doctor to have the appropriate conversation or kind of nudge them to have that conversation with you, or it's something where there's been some interactivity on the site, so I'm answering questions about my health, so that generates a more customized set of questions or follow-up questions based on my responses. Um, and again, the whole, the whole goal of it is just give me everything I can possibly get within my hands to make my interaction with my doctor better um, and get me towards using that product I saw or that device I saw. Marketing to the elderly population entails being really empathetic um, to how somebody who is elder elderly might be using the internet. Chances are, in most cases, they may not be using Google Chrome. They might have um, Internet Explorer um, as their browser. So for us on the digital marketing side, in that case, we might be more apt to run our campaigns in Bing than we might be um, in AdWords or using a combination. Typically, for the majority of our clients, we go um, with AdWords or social media across the board for our campaigns. But for the elderly, Bing tends to provide good results from an advertising perspective. Um, when it comes to UX and content, um, we need to take into account that the elderly may need a slightly larger font type. They may need clearer calls to action. They don't need things that are too complicated. They want us to use really plain English um, when we are kind of telling them what to do with our content or our internal linking or our designs. Um, so that's something to, uh, to, to take into major account is um, that uh, we're going to need to present a user experience that ends up being really elderly friendly. Um, from a keyword based perspective, if we're, if we're talking about SEO, there isn't a lot that we would take into account for the elderly. They're going to be utilizing the same types of search terms that the majority of the population would be utilizing. Um, but I think it plays a larger role when we're doing advertising campaigns or when we're focusing on UX. Um, uh, that the elderly population would need you know, special considerations uh, in those two different avenues. Right. Social media campaigns in particular, where we can target the younger generation, we can target the older generation. And the nice thing is, because we have that targeting, we can tailor our messages and our user experience to people that we know that we're driving um, to a particular area with a particular advertisement to make that user flow um, really uh, speak to exactly who we're marketing to with our different campaigns. Thank you.